Once upon a time, there was a gentle king and queen who lived in a beautiful river valley with their beloved daughter, Frideswide. Her name meant peace and strength, but it was a time of wars and wicked kings. When Frideswide was still little, her mother fell gravely ill. Taking Frideswide into her arms, she told her, have courage, my child, and always stay true to yourself, and then closed her eyes and died. Afterwards, Frideswide was raised by gentle nuns who loved her and taught her well. She listened to their bedtime stories of kindness and hope, and often thought of her mother, wishing she could have saved her. One day, Frideswide saw the cook beating a poor peasant. He'd been caught stealing wine and begged for mercy. Please, I only took it for my daughter. She's sick and cannot see. Oh, sure. Next you'll be stealing gold for your cousin's crooked legs. The other servants shouted for him to be punished. Frideswide wanted to believe the poor man and took the wine herself to go and see the poor man's child. The man's wife mixed the wine into a healing balm for the child's eyes. When the child blinked and cried, I can see, Frideswide was delighted and then despaired to find that the child could not read. Frideswide went straight to the king. Father, there are so many children who need us. We must help them. And so he did. Still but a child, Frideswide was already known for her kindness and devotion. As Frideswide grew up, many princes and kings sought her hand in marriage. But Frideswide only said, if I must marry, then let it be to my kingdom. There is so much I want to do here and so little time. The king admired his daughter and wanted her to be happy, but worried nonetheless. One day, a wicked king named Algar heard of the virtuous princess and decided she would be the perfect prize for a glorious king such as himself. He sent his messengers to Frideswide's father. Our esteemed and glorious King Algar wishes to marry the beautiful Frideswide. Surely your majesty would agree, as Algar is indeed so magnificent and ever so glorious a king. Before Frideswide's father could even reply, Frideswide told them, Please explain to King Algar that I must decline his offer, for I do not wish to marry. If he is as glorious as he says, I'm sure he'll understand. Unfortunately, King Algar did not understand. How dare she reject the great Algar? Does she not know how handsome I am and how rich? Did you not mention how glorious? The messengers all nodded. Stomping off his throne, he called for his war horse and soldiers. I will have that princess if I must steal her myself. When they heard King Algar and his men were coming for her, Frideswise's father wept in despair. He had already lost his queen and now feared losing his daughter and kingdom as well. My dear child, we live in a time of wars and wicked kings and you are just a princess. What else can we do? Do not fear, father, said Frideswide. I shall do whatever I must to stay true to myself. That night, Frideswide prayed for courage and escaped from the castle. She ran all the way to the water and found a small boat just as Algar arrived and learnt that the princess had disappeared. As Frideswide hastily rowed up the river, a furious Algar sent his men after her. She rowed for as long and as hard as she could. When she could row no longer, she stopped at a riverbank and found a dense thorn wood. They'll never be able to find me in here, Frideswide thought 
and picked her way through the thorny branches when Algar's men found her boat and sent a pack of ferocious dogs into the trees to hunt her down. The vicious sound of the dogs sent Frideswide desperately running through the thorns until she found an old roofed pigsty. It reeked like a pig's bottom. But Frideswide jumped in and hid beneath the muck. When the dogs drew near, they howled in disgust. Even the soldiers retched and turned away. Blah! No princess would go in there. When they were all gone, Frideswide crawled out, smelling of pig's poop, mouldy hay and old boots. Her clothes were torn to rags. Her hair was a tangled mess. No one would believe she was a princess now but neither would anyone help her. As Frideswide wandered from place to place, looking for shelter, everyone turned her away, thinking she was just another poor beggar. At last, Frideswide came to a farm run by an old woman named Faith, who looked after several orphaned girls. Though they hardly had enough to feed themselves, the old woman simply looked at Frideswide and said, What's one more? And then sniffed the air. But not without a bath first. Afterwards, Faith put Frideswide in a bed next to two poorly little orphan girls named Cicely and Catherine, who lay in bed with terrible coughs. Unable to sleep, Frideswide told them one of the nuns' many bedtime stories of kindness and hope until their eyes soon closed. Kissing them both on the cheeks, Frideswide thought to herself, there are so many poor and sick children in need. I wish there was some way I could help them. No longer a princess now. She was just as poor and in need as they were. Later that night, Frideswide was woken up by the sound of coughing. The little girl, Cicely, was hot as a stove and begging for water. She drank as much as they would give her, but it was no use. By morning, she was even worse. Faith told everyone to prepare their farewells and start picking flowers for the funeral. Frideswide ran outside in tears, feeling as hopeless as when she was a child. Falling to her knees and closing her eyes, she prayed, please, I would do anything to save her. When she opened her eyes again, the sun was shining on a patch of bright yellow daisies. Frideswide sighed. At least there would be decent flowers for the funeral. Frideswide went to pick the flowers, but they were strangely stubborn. When they finally came out, it was with a big pop and water started trickling up from the hole in the ground. It looked dark and sticky as treacle pudding. But when Frideswide cupped it in her hands and brought it to her lips, the water was clear and sweet. Frideswide hurried and brought some to the little girl. After just one sip, she immediately sat up and croaked, more. The little girl recovered and the trickle of water soon turned into a pool. All the children came out to see it and splashed about in the fresh water. Even Faith pulled off her boots and dipped her feet in. When the bunions on her feet disappeared, she cried, ah, oh, it's a miracle. Word of the water's healing spread. Poor and sick children began arriving from all over the land. Faith's house became a place of welcome and healing. As Frideswide busied herself caring for all the sick and poor, she soon forgot all about Algar, not knowing that the wicked king's spies were still roaming the countryside searching for her. When he still could not find the princess, Algar was furious, but he was sure the day would soon come. One day, news arrived that Frideswide's father was on his deathbed, ill with grief and worry over his daughter. Certain that Algar had given up by now, Frideswide hurried back home to bring her father some healing water. Overjoyed at her return, Frideswide's father immediately regained his health and the city celebrated the princess's return. 
As soon as Algar heard Fryswide had returned, he called for his warhorse and soldiers once again. This time, Princess Fridewide will finally be mine. At dawn the next day, Frideswide found her city surrounded by soldiers. Algar vowed to destroy the entire city if they did not hand over the princess. The people refused, but Frideswide would not bear their suffering. Falling to her knees, she prayed, please give me the strength to stay true to myself. Then, with tears in her eyes, she finally agreed to marry King Algar and went to the city gates. Algar smiled in wicked triumph and rode up to claim his prize. Just as he was about to enter the city gates, the skies rumbled and there was a terrible clap of thunder. A bolt of lightning struck the earth. Algar was flung off his war horse in a gust of fire and smoke. When the air cleared, Algar was on his knees, his hands raised up to his eyes in pain. Please, someone help me, I am blind. Everyone was stunned. Algar's soldiers didn't know what to do. The people of the city began demanding Algar's punishment. Frideswide looked down at the weeping king, then remembered what she had prayed for and said, true peace is stronger than even the most glorious of kings. God has given me the courage to help you today so that you may have the courage to help someone tomorrow. Taking out a bottle, Frideswide splashed Algar's face with the healing water and helped him up. He coughed and spluttered, then opened his eyes. It's a miracle, I can see again. Then he fell on his knees again before Frideswide. Please, can you ever forgive me? From that day forth, Algar would never bother another princess again and left Frideswide's kingdom in peace. Afterwards, Frideswide invited Faith and her orphans to join her and her father helped them build a new place of welcome and healing. He never asked her to marry again, and Frieswey devoted the rest of her life to caring for the sick and poor. She would always be remembered for her bravery and mercy, and her name of peace and strength still lived to this day in the same river valley she roamed in her youth.